Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. And it's been a debate for a long time now, Apple versus Google, who makes the better phone operating system? You have iOS and iPhones, and you have Android on multiple manufacturers, Samsung, LG, even Google makes their own, just to name a few. And I wanna take a deeper look and see with iOS 13, what it does better than Android, Android 10 being the latest right now. And then of course, don't get too mad just yet. In this video, I'll be covering iOS 13, what they do better, but there will be another video coming where I take a deeper look at Android 10, what they do better with uh, than iOS. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the iPhone and iOS 13 and see what iOS does better than Android in 2020. Let's get started. So here are the two latest devices from Google and Apple, the Pixel 4 XL and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I will have the Pixel 4 XL on hand to reference Android, show off some differences, but I will mainly be looking at the iPhone here. And again, I will be doing a video on what makes Android better than iOS that is coming very soon. But let's talk about the benefits of iOS and iPhones in general. I'd like to start with a couple obvious ones just because they've been around so long and because Google is doing their best to catch up to Apple in this aspect. First of all, I go to general settings and go to software update. You will see your software is up to date and that is the same across multiple iPhones for a lot of support. Now the Pixel variant does get updates right away from Google, so the Pixel variant gets it. However, with other manufacturers, updates are generally slower and things get a lot more fragmented. That's been a problem on Android for a long time. Not only do they get updates quicker, Apple supports iOS 13 on much older devices. You can actually run iOS 13, which is on the latest iPhone, all the way back on the iPhone 6S and iPhone SE. So that continued support that Apple does give throughout their devices will actually increase value to these devices. Since these devices get supported longer, people seem to hold on to them longer and their value stays true. That of course is because Apple doesn't really discount their phones very much, whereas where you got a Google Pixel, which goes on sale within the first few months of coming out. Our next feature that iOS does better is AirDrop. So for example, let's snap a quick picture right there, go into the photo, hit share, and go ahead and select AirDrop. My MacBook Pro is available right there. I can select it and it instantly gets transferred. You just heard the ding, instantly transferred over to my MacBook and I am done. I can go back home. Very simple. That process is much more difficult on an Android phone. Now this works with other Apple devices, whether you have a MacBook, an iPad, another iPhone. So my buddy wants to unlock his iPhone, I can go ahead and search for it, send him a file real quick and just transfer that right over. Now on Google, apparently they are working about that, working on that in an update coming soon. However, it has not been there for a while. So AirDrop is far superior than any file transfer system on Android. Now, if you don't agree with me on some of these, just drop a comment, let me know, I'll be around to consider them in my next video. Now, the next thing, FaceTime. Google is starting to integrate Google Duo into their operating system, however, it's not fully integrated yet, so anyone with an Android phone doesn't necessarily have Google Duo signed in and ready to go for a video call. Whereas with Apple devices, Apple pretty much forces you to sign into FaceTime and have it on your device integrated within the dialer app. So once that starts happening on Android, it can't compete in terms of video chatting. Another big one specifically in the US, not necessarily around the world, that would be iMessage. Because you could send things such as files, you can have read receipts. There's a lot more chat features involved in iMessage and it's sent over data as opposed to your wireless signal. You'll see I have it off because having iMessage on really locks you in when you transfer over to an Android phone and I switch back and forth so much, I generally like to have it off. Google is all over the place with messaging. They're not really anywhere near competing with iMessage just yet. RCS is starting to roll out. However, it's not integrated directly into the Android operating system. And until they do that, they will not compete with iMessage. Now this one's a bit of an opinion, but I find animations to be better in iOS. They just make the device feel more fluid and more smooth. However, I will say, unless Apple jumps on the higher refresh rate bandwagon, uh, they will actually fall behind Android because with higher refresh rate, refresh rate displays, it makes things seem smoother. Whereas if you added a higher refresh rate to Apple's very good animations in general, that will actually really add to the operating system fluidity and smoothness. Something else iOS does better is within display settings. I'm gonna to go to both and you will see right away up at the top, you can switch to dark mode 
on the fly. And what they offer you is a way to customize it. So you can actually have it sunrise to sunset or a custom schedule. Whereas with Android, you wanna turn the dark theme on? All right, you gotta check the box. And that's pretty much it. You can toggle it on and off within the settings, uh, the toggles up here, but that's it. And it's a little strange because on Android, they have night light to actually make the display more warm, get rid of blue light, and you can completely customize this. So I don't know why they couldn't just take this schedule and put it into night mode. So that's definitely something iOS does better is takes their dark mode and makes it system wide. And it's just better system wide overall at the moment. It uh, has rolled out throughout multiple apps and is completely system wide. Whereas Android is still missing a couple apps that don't have that dark mode. This is more hardware related, but something Apple has dominated is the haptic feedback. So the vibration motors within iPhones have been significantly better than those in Android phones. Now I will say Android has caught up a little bit. However, there is just no com comparison to the vibration motors on Apple devices just throughout the system. When I press and hold on an app, when I get a call or a text message, it just feels really good in the hand and the feedback just makes it feel more real like you're really interacting with that OS. Something iOS does better that I think Google really dropped the ball in the latest version of Android is screen recording. Now I just swipe from the bottom, top right, press the recording app, three, two, one, I get ready to go, and it is now recording. You'll see in the upper left-hand corner, we're good to go. So whatever it is that I open or close, it will just go ahead and record that. If I wanna stop, just press up there, hit stop, screen recording video saved to photos. This is great, especially when I wanna show someone how to do something or if there's something going on, specifically if they have questions about their phone or just anything like that having a screen recorder is really handy and it's not built in natively into Android 10. Specifically in iOS 13 and the later model iPhones, battery life has been incredible. iOS 13 does a very good job at standby battery life. So when I actually don't plug my phone in, it only lose a few percent, whereas on Android 10, I'm gonna lose upwards of 10% if I leave it off the charger overnight. You can also tie it into processors. I don't wanna go in detail in processors because iPhone chips are only in iPhones, whereas Android can have multiple processors. But the latest processors, when you compare the two, I would say Apple does dominate in the higher end chips. However, I've never really had a problem running any apps on an iPhone versus the latest processor of an Android phone. So it just has the potential and longevity having a better processor in the flagship model. And speaking of apps, when it comes to the App Store and Play Store, they both have similar apps, but while using both phones, I find that similar apps are developed just a little bit better on iOS. I think developers just have a preference of developing on iOS and just after using, you know, apps like Instagram, Twitter, other things like that, they just seem to work a little bit better on iOS when you compare them to Android phones. Kind of random, but if you are a smartwatch person, the best smartwatch is only available while using an iPhone. So the Apple Watch is definitely the best smartwatch out right now. I actually just got it not too long ago and have been using it. Uh, whereas Android doesn't really have a great alternative. They have a couple decent smartwatches, but nothing as good as the Apple Watch. I don't wanna go too much into the cameras because of course that's a lot more hardware based and there's a lot of different phones that do run Android, different hardware all that good stuff. But when it comes to image processing, I have to say they're very similar. I don't think I can give a better score to one or the other. I honestly just liked the iPhone 11 Pro's camera better this year because it had the extra ultra wide angle lens. That's just about the only reason in terms of point and shoot. However, of course there's things that Android does better. We'll get to that in a future video. I will say though, uh, when it comes to pictures on the iPhone, the lighting is better, where you can have different stage lightings, contour lighting, studio lightings. Of course, if you like to use those things, it is clearly better on Apple devices. Now, also hardware related, but when it comes to face unlock, Apple's is better. I will say simply because from a software standpoint, all of the apps have face unlock, face ID integrated into their security. If you wanna sign in, such as a banking app, it integrates it. Whereas the Pixel took a long time to get that developer support because they decided to drop a fingerprint scanner. However, of course, Android still does support fingerprint scanners, which makes it better if you are looking for a phone with a fingerprint scanner and maybe not one with a bigger notch. And with all of that being said, I still think the standouts are the ones that have been around for so long that Android has not been able to duplicate, such as AirDrop. 
iMessage, FaceTime. They have tried, they're working towards it, but they still haven't gotten to that level right now. So it is interesting to see how Android will try and catch up, but those reasons are big ones why iOS 13 is better and things they do better than Android. And after going through my list of things that Android does better than iOS, I have to say uh, there are more things in my opinion, that Android does better than iOS. However, after looking at it, I think that the fewer things that iOS does better have a little bit more impact on consumers. So going forward, we will see, uh, like I said, I'm working on another video talking about what Android does better overall than iOS. So that's coming very soon. Make sure you click that subscribe button. But overall, those are all of the things that I wanted to talk about that make iOS better than Android. Again, another video coming soon. Stay tuned. Drop a comment. I will be reading through them. So let me know what you think. If there's other things that I missed about iOS that are better, or of course, if there's things you think Android does better that I mentioned, just let me know. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching.